The world urgently needs to combat the climate emergency and shift to a low carbon climate resilient economy. In part, this is going to require a really swift and radical transformation of our energy systems and scaling renewable energy rapidly will be at the heart of this transformation. Private investment is going to be key, but it doesn't naturally flow into this kind of investment. Development finance institutions can play a really important role here thanks to their development mandate and access to affordable long-term finance. Our study seeks to investigate this role and ask the following questions. What are the key barriers to investing in renewable energy and how does this vary by country? What kind of financing models do they use? And finally, what are their comparative advantages in doing this? We found that technology risk is the top risk hindering the piloting of renewable energy, whereas political, policy and regulatory risks are the key constraint to scaling it up. Foreign exchange risk was also key and especially acute in developing countries. Few DFIs have a complete toolkit. The majority of DFI investment focuses on scaling or piloting investment of established technologies. Traditional senior lending and co-financing dominates their approach. The more innovative approaches tended to be financed by blended finance or the deployment of special funds managed off balance sheet. DFIs, especially national development banks, play a critical role in building the project pipeline and foreign exchange risk remains an unresolved issue. National development banks are also key intermediators of international climate funds. And finally, we find that DFIs have a number of comparative advantages, such as the provision of affordable patient capital and technical expertise. We make four key recommendations. Large multilateral development finance institutions who have access to cheap external capital and NDB should step up their investment in new frontier renewable energy technology. Secondly, these institutions should also step up their engagement with national development banks and channel much more concessional finance through them. The Green Climate Fund should also review accreditation barriers and explore how to prioritise and develop new forms of access for national development banks. Thirdly, foreign exchange risk is a huge barrier. The use of guarantees and increased use of local currency lending by the multilaterals should be explored. And finally, policy coherence is key, as in several countries, policy and regulatory uncertainty worked against national development bank efforts to pilot and scale renewable energy investment. <music>